Rando, Rando. that these in-state rivals saw one another and this time both are top 15 teams with six points on the wet line. Welcome to the Mizzou Hockey pregame show brought to you by Jim Butler Centralia, the exclusive automotive partner. Good evening everyone. I'm Luca Vitale Long, me Owen Backer, Aiden O'Connor. Guys, we got a matchup probably of the ages this weekend as the number 10 ranked Missouri State Bears will take on the number 13 ranked Mizzou Tigers as both teams also, they both had a couple of wins. Mizzou coming off a series sweep against number 20 ranked Wash U the week before Thanksgiving break. Two needed wins as they're 11 1 and 1 on the season. And on the other hand, the Missouri State Bears, they split a series with the number ranked 11 Arkansas Razorbacks the week before Thanksgiving break. And they've had one of the tougher schedules in D3 hockey, I might add. So let's get going here, guys, as. Um, we sort of recap this Wash U series. And just for the audience out there, this blue was not planned. Um, so sorry if we look like a bunch of, I guess, Smurfs is maybe the word you want to use. Sure. <laughs> Who is that? So Owen, oh, uh, sort of talk to us. What did you see in that Wash U series that you liked, what you didn't like? Well, first, I'd like to say my other nice shirt is green, but that would not be an option because my torso would disappear on the green screen. So we roll with this. Um, I thought the Wash U series might have been the Tigers' best series all year. They didn't run up the score like we're used to them seeing, but they just kind of controlled the whole game. They had a few missteps. No game is perfect. There's always, of course, room for improvement, but I thought they had a really solid game. They controlled all three zones of the ice. They played well in all three periods for the most part. They had very solid goaltending. They had scoring up and down their whole lineup, which we keep talking about, you know, all of the goals from from that top line, like 47% of all of the Tigers' goals have been from their first line. And finally, the second line, the third line, the fourth line looked incredible, specifically Jack Chubb, fantastic. And so I think if they can say, hey, that's our template, right? We Against Wash U, a very good team, we were able to do that. Can we keep that rolling and, and keep doing that towards every opponent that we face? I 100% agree with you. Um, I'm going to go a step further and say that was the Mizzou Tigers' best series of the entire season. I thought they played a full 60 minutes in both games, in my best estimation. And this is important to note as well, as this is the Tigers' first series coming back from a week off in a month stretch. It's crazy. They had a much-needed break. Um, the only series that they lost in that month stretch was against Purdue at Purdue. Otherwise, they're on a five-game winning streak and definitely something they want to continue for the resume purposes because this is six points that can come down during playoff time. So this is definitely two games that are important for both teams, not just Mizzou, but rather Missouri State as well because this is a division matchup with the Matcha South. So definitely something to look at. But in terms of the Wash U series, I thought the Tigers played a full 60 minutes. I thought Tanner Richardson and Jack Dobbs, they had a much-needed bounce-back game in which I felt both of them needed because they've had a couple of uh, iffy games here and there, and they returned to their form back in September, early October, when they played a little lighter opponents in ISU, SLU, and Ole Miss in October. Um, but th this is definitely something they needed besides – obviously getting their scoring opportunities because we know this team could score. There's no doubt about that. But another thing that really stuck out to me, stuck out to me rather the most was the defense. Without Jack Hazelton, that defense I felt like reached another level that we have not really seen yet this year. They pushed the Greco brothers and Cole Hannon to the outside that we talked about. They made the in-game adjustments when they had to. This defense locked down every single playmaker that Wash U had, and that is why they were able to limit every single opportunity they really had and made Tanner Richardson and Jack Dobbs a lot easier behind in the crease. 
Don't forget about Michael Christopher, too, getting some action in that last series. Uh, the goalie is a very important position. You never know what can happen throughout the season, whether it's play, whether it's injuries. You always need that next guy to step up and be able to slide in between the pipes. Luca, you made a good point. I want to take a step back. You talked about this is the Tigers' first full week off in this past month, month plus, starting with the Purdue series. It's been a gauntlet. It's been very good teams. You know, forget Purdue. I understand the, the Tigers didn't get the job done as they would like to in that series. But just talk about this last homestand. I mean, going back to the Arkansas series, that was a good team. Tigers handled business. Nebraska-Omaha, a little bit iffy in there, but then move on to Wash U as well. That's a good team. And then this is by far, like you said, maybe the most exciting and probably the biggest test for the Tigers right now. And with a week off, you get time, get everyone healthy as best they can, be able to work towards that offensive zone. I like what you said, too, uh, using the third and fourth line, not getting all your scoring from the first line. But, hey, I don't care where the scoring come from. It can be line six and seven for all I care, as long as the puck finds the back of the net. But just riding that wave, using this week, and it might even at this point in the season throw you off a little bit because you've been playing so much. You had a weekend off. Regroup. You had the holiday. You got to see some family. Now you're back on the ice and just get ready to take care of business. Yeah, and, I mean, you guys talk about the depth, obviously, this team has. So let's uh, give the freshmen their flowers, shall we? I mean, Aaron Hemmer has been a monster the last couple of weeks for this team, and it's came at the right time against a teams like Arkansas and the University of Nebraska, Omaha. And then you got someone like Grant Bader and Brett Zimmer stepping up against Wash U when Andrew Knapp was held scoreless in that second game, something that's very rare. But as we know, Missouri State, are they're going to have their eyes on him and Nick Spolick. So it's going to be very important for these other guys to step up, the young guys especially. And I spoke to Sean Carrier, by the way, who is a former Mizzou player that was part of that Nationals team last year. And I asked him, what did you like about this? This Wash U series in its totality and he says all three phases were clicking and that is how that team was able to get to the Nationals last year and make a run like they did because all three phases were clicking he thought they actually took a step further in that Wash U series so that is definitely something good to hear from a former player that knows what it takes to get to Nationals come March. So now let's sort of dive, before we sort of dive into this Missouri State Series, let's sort of talk about what we see at the injury front, right? Jack Hazelton was out for that uh, Wash U Series with a upper body injury. He will return tonight to action. Otherwise, for the first time since the Ole Miss Series, there are no injuries being reported right now on the injury front. So definitely something needed. And I did speak to Jack Hazelton earlier this week about how did that week off help you guys uh, get back to full strength. He says, well, we had a couple of ankle injuries, hit uh, some bruises here and there, but that week was we were able to heal and recover, and otherwise we would have a couple guys out this weekend. So definitely something to note there. Now, transitioning now between the Missouri State Series and Mizzou, right? Missouri State is 15-5 and five on the season with a tie on their resume. Missouri is 11-1-1. So, as we know, this is going to be a series that everyone has been waiting for because this is not only an in-state rival, it's a division matchup in a top 15 uh, battle that we're going to be see seeing that's going to affect seeding later in the season, and then we're also going to be seeing how it's going to affect the rankings in the near future. But last time around that these two teams battled out, they were in Springfield last time around last September – so a long time ago, these two teams were very different. The first game, Missouri State took it 2-1, to one, and then the Missouri Tigers took that second one, a back-and-forth contest, 8-7, to seven, overtime winner with Nick Spolick with that one. So for those Mizzou fans that remember, it was that long ago that these two teams played one another. But as we know, there's going to be a lot. There's going to be fireworks. Get your popcorn ready for this weekend because it's going to be a good one. Aiden, I'm going to start with you. What should we expect this weekend? Well, I really like, uh, first off, this is more of the marketing front, the fact that the team's taking a bus down from here in Columbia to the rink in Jefferson City, getting a lot of fans there for this matchup that will be exciting. I think it's going to be a lot similar to the Arkansas series, hopefully with more fans in the building if uh, this bus trip does go as planned for the team. It's going to be physical. It's two good teams. You talk about Missouri scoring on their first line. They have a lot of it. Well, Missouri State has the same thing. They have – I think, what is it, three players with over 40 points, something like that. Mm -hmm. They have three really good players on that front. I'd give them the top six. They have depth as well, but it's going to be digging into that depth for Missouri State, but I think it's the same thing for Mizzou. You get Hazleton back, that's huge for the blue line. Be physical, win the, neck, 
win the net front battle and just, you know, those goals, breakaways, you know, uh, slowing up, getting open in the, in the slot for a snipe, those are great. I want those greasy goals, those gritty goals, getting positioning in front of the net. doesn't matter how the puck winds up in the back of the net. You can't kick it as long as it's not distinct, but get that puck in the back of the net, get gritty, throw someone on their butt, and make sure you win the game. I'm going to add a little bit more on the Missouri State front because I got the opportunity to talk to Missouri State head coach Cody Blevins earlier this week. And what I noticed is, and by the way, I did want to mention this fun fact for you those at home. Bob Booker used to be the head coach at Missouri State. He coached there for five seasons, two uh, national championship appearances, or nationals appearances, rather, excuse me. And he also transformed the D2 program to the D1 program. So I thought this is a little fun fact. He gets to go up against his former team this weekend, so that's definitely a little maybe extra motivation to sort of get those wins, as if the Tigers need them, but they really don't. They don't need more motivation. This is a team that's been motivated since day one um but let's sort of talk about missouri state right cody blevins nice little thing is that he's coaching at his alma mater uh he actually played for the d3 team a couple of seasons ago and i asked him what is exactly different from last series last season's series versus this year and he says well there's a lot more at stake and this team we have a lot more grit and a lot more experience. And he's, and I'm like, what do you exactly mean by that? And he says, well, we took two Western Michigan trips. And that is where it comes into play. When he took over the helm in 2016 as the head coach for Missouri State, they actually made the Nationals that first season under his stewardship. And they went 0-3 in that appearance. And I asked him, what did you learn from that? How did that immediate success help you long term? And what he told me was, well, I, there's a lot of importance on recruiting, and we need to be able to have a harder schedule so I can give the guys a taste what it's like to get back here. And if you look at Missouri, Missouri State's schedule, they have played a lot of tough teams. They've played Grand Valley State. They've played Hope College. They've played Saginaw Valley State. They've played Dort University. Those are all teams that are or were in the top 25 at some point this season. And I think it's very important for everyone to understand this is probably the most talented slash has the most depth that Mizzou has faced this season. Yeah, I mean, this team is no joke, right? I and I don't think the Tigers are taking them lightly, but in case they are, they shouldn't because Missouri State is fantastic, and they have all of the grit. They have all the physicality that you'd expect from a top team like them, but also they love to run up the score. They have had uh, five separate games this year in which they scored eight or more goals, including against UNO, in which they won 14 to nothing. which UNO played a decent game against the Tigers, and obviously the rock, paper, scissors thing doesn't always work if you beat this team and I beat this team, so that means I'm better than you. But beating a team 14 to nothing like that and just absolutely knocking their socks off, it might put the fear of God in the Tigers a little bit. But I think that this is a series that if they play the way they did against Wash U and played the way that we know they can, they should be able to win this series. Or I mean, this is a talented roster. If, if the goaltenders can show up and play the way that we know they can, the forwards show up and play the way we know they can, if the defense can play the way they did last time with the addition of Jack Hazleton now in the lineup, there is no reason that the Tigers should lose the series. I get that this is a daunting task, but I think it's something that they are ready for. Yeah, and just like Mizzou, I mean, they shouldn't be surprised by the depth this team has because, well, they have it themselves. I mean, we see all four lines can go out there. They can roll out four lines and just be okay with it. Same thing with Missouri State. I mean, we all know they got a Jacob Holmstrom. They got a Vincent Conti. They got a uh, Isaac Cooper. They're able in Tyler Culleton. These are guys, those first three that I mentioned, have a total of ni combined 98 points already in the season. So this is a team, obviously, that's able to find the back of the net, but they also have a lockdown defense at their disposal with someone like Zach Zaccardi. So this is somewhat, this is a team that's able to know what it takes to get the job done. And it's going to come down to who wants it more. That's number one. And number two, I'm going to talk about this in just a little bit, but the first five minutes will dictate who's going to win this series. I feel like it's going to take the first five minutes. And I asked Jack Hazleton, is there something you guys did different in practice this week because you guys know the task that's, at, that's coming up for you? And he says, we practiced a lot harder. We practiced a lot harder. We got those guys, those younger guys, 
into the mindset that this is what it's, it's going to happen in a real game setting this weekend. And they did a lot more hitting in a actual practice in the week than they actually usually do. So I thought that was very interesting that he mentioned that to me. All right, keeping that in mind now, going to our three keys. I spoke to Jack Hazelton earlier this week about what his three keys were this, uh, this series, and here's what he had to say. Physicality, because they're going to be very physical with us. Um, following our, our systems, our offensive zone and defensive zone coverages. And I think special teams will play a huge role this weekend because both teams like to get penalties. So, All right, that's what Jack Hazelton had to say about his three keys. And now for us, we're going to give our three keys. So, Aiden, I want you to take it away for us. All right, it's more what I said and more what you guys worked on. Number one, stay physical. You got to hit. You have to get gritty, and you just have to find a way. Like you said, there's the top line for this team is amazing. And I'm not saying go out there and play dirty hockey, but you have to knock these guys down. Hazleton's going to be big, big physically and big in the game. But coming back for the blue line off injury, he's going to be a really big factor in this game. The rest of the defense as well. Stay physical. And my second one works along with that. It's win the neutral zone. You know, you get the puck into your own zone, that's fine, and that's great, but how are you going to do that? Tigers had a lot of turnovers last week in two games – or last weekend in games that they won or two weekends ago in games that they won, but you got to clean that up in the neutral zone, keep it clean, and just work the puck in and then find your offensive chances. My last one's ride the wave. Tigers haven't lost a game in the month of November. Stay hot. Keep it going. Last loss was, what, October 28th against Purdue, something like that. This team is hot. Keep it going and see what you can do after this. I appreciate the keys and very good keys, I might add. Um, I believe you are right. It is the end of October. Uh, they did not lose in November, and now we're in December, which is crazy. We're we're officially in the holiday spirit. I think for one of our shows, we should we should for we'll do some Christmas thing. Oh, we should God. for next week. All right. Um, so. Yeah. For my keys, let's go to number one here. Win the first five minutes. I briefly just mentioned that. I uh, spoke, Jack Hazelton said it, Cody Blevins said it, everyone has said it, and I even want to mention it as well. This game, this series, in my opinion, is going to be determined in the first five minutes. Who, who wants it more? Who is playing harder? Who has the more skill? We know both of these teams have skill. There's no doubt about it. It's just who's able to outwork the other team. Who wants it more? Are you using your speed? Are you outworking them physic uh, physically? Are you able to get the shots on net? Because Missouri State is going to get their shots on net. They're going to get their good looks. It's a matter of minimizing those good looks if you're Mizzou because you know what they're gonna you know what they're gonna do. It's just a matter of are you able to minimize the damage early on and especially early goals like the first two minutes that tends to destroy any momentum a home team can try to create early on and we saw in the Wash U series that Wash U did score first in one of those games so trying to minimize that because goals are going to come at a premium in my opinion in this series let's go to number two here get the young guys involved quickly we know Andrew Knapp, who happens to be a young guy, and Nick Spolick. We know what they bring to the table. We know what Danny Rudman brings to the table and Nathan Austin. We know what they bring. But we're talking here about Aaron Hemmer. We're talking JT Baker, Grant Bader, uh, Brett Zimmer, the guys that are considered the depth pieces of this team, even though you really can't consider them depth pieces because I feel like a lot of these guys can play in the first line if the coach decided to do that. But this is where it's going to come important because – we already know that Missouri State's going to have their eyes on Nick Spolick and Andrew Knapp as soon as that puck drops. We already know what's going to happen. It's a matter of the younger guys who don't have as much experience, but rather they know they can make an impact as soon as they can. Get the puck on the net. Make your presence felt. Win your shift. Even though you don't score a goal on your shift, it's okay. You just need to be able to do the little things, and that way you will win your shift. And winning every 20 minutes is going to come very important in this contest. Let's go number three. Keep the penalties to a minimum. you got to be able to stay out of the box. This Missouri State squad, because Mizzou would know it because they are very good on the man advantage. Missouri State is also very good on the man advantage. They will destroy you on the man advantage if you continue to keep take, take, taking penalties. Excuse me. Stay out of the box. Obviously, this is going to be a physical contest like Aiden says, sticking to your identity, which physicality is part of it, but obviously not doing late hits, not getting dirty. 
at we've seen some other teams do this year. They got out of their rhythm like Wash U did that last second half of that game, and it cost them. I, I was it three goals, I believe, on the power play? Yeah, it was three goals on the power play. Three goals on the power play. So, obviously, Mizzou cannot afford to do that against an opponent like Missouri State. But those are my three keys. Oh, and let's see yours. All right. Well, in a similar vein to you guys, I kind of have the same vibe. So, my three keys. Uh, number one, don't allow too many rush chances. This is something the Tigers have been a bit iffy on this year. Um, I mean, they've got great goaltending, but ideally you don't want to – you want to put your goaltender in a position to succeed, right, the best position possible. Don't allow too many rush chances. Try to keep shots to the perimeter. Um, you don't want Jack Dobbs uh, or Tanner Richardson trying to make too many breakaway saves, any two-on-ones. Just keep that to a minimum because we all know that the uh, big point producers on Missouri State will bite you for that. Maybe Wash U's best players or, or UNO's best players or Arkansas's best players weren't able to convert all the time in those chances, but I'd be willing to bet that Missouri State's best players will be able to. My second key is set the tone. Kind of similar to what both of you guys said. First five minutes of the game is going to be huge. I'll even stretch and say the first ten minutes of the game. you got to go out there, first shift, be physical, be aggressive. You will then set the tone for the entire series of what it's going to look like. If Missouri State can get put on their back foot immediately, I reckon it'll stay like that for most of at least the first game. Um, but if the Tigers come out flat in those first 5-10 minutes, they can't set the tone, they're not physical, they're not aggressive, and Missouri State has complete control of everything, I really don't like the Tigers' odds there. Uh, and third, solid goaltending. They have two good goaltenders, we know this, but you really got to, they're going to have to make big saves. There's only so much you can do to limit an offense like Missouri State. They're, as much as you know, Tiger fans will, will hate to hear it, Missouri State's going to score some goals in this series. They're going to get some chances. They're going to get maybe a breakaway or two. And you're just going to need your goalie to stand on his head a little bit. You're going to need the big saves. You are going to need that that flashy glove hand and something to just bail your team out when, when mistakes happen because mistakes will happen. And so I also think whoever has a better goaltender this series will probably win the series because we know both high-caliber offenses are going to get chances. Yeah, and that's why I feel like the defense is going to come more involved for both teams. I feel like it's going to come down to defense. Who's going to play better defense in pushing playmakers to the outside, not allowing those low slot opportunities because you will find that that puck's going to find the back of the net probably nine out of the ten times. I don't think many playmakers are going to miss shots like that. All right, so keep that in mind. Let's pick them. Let's start with Aiden here. The last time I was on this show, uh, the two gentlemen to my right both picked the visiting Arkansas Razorbacks, and that did not go their way. Uh, I was the only one to take the Tigers. I don't know what they're picking today, but I'm going to stay true to that. Give me the Tigers. It's the Tiger right there. Uh, the real school in Missouri, and we're about to see if it's the real hockey school as well. So, like I said, stay physical. I'm taking Missouri in a, uh, give me a, give me a 6-5 OT winner. Go with that. I like that. I like that. And keep holding that sign up, by the way. Keep, if, you, if you're so proud about your pick, hold it up. You know what I'm saying? Hold it up. It's not going anywhere. It's not, go, it's not going anywhere. I see that. All right. Um, first of all, Aiden, number one, a broken clock's right, right twice a day. Okay? Just keep that in mind. Okay? It's my second time. Yeah. It's your, it's your second time. I mean, broken clock's right twice a day. Okay? All right. Maybe, th maybe it'll be right three times a day because I'm taking the other Missouri team in Missouri State. Um, listen, I... I think the holiday spirit is going to get a little sour for the Missouri Tigers tonight. Listen, I, I'm all about the holiday spirit. Don't get me wrong, but I think the Grinch is going to come in there tonight, and unfortunately the Missouri State Bears are going to take it in overtime. I'm with Aiden in the overtime part. I feel like this is going to come down to the first five minutes, like I said, and I feel like Missouri State happens to have more depth at their disposal. I feel like they have more experience against D3 teams that Mizzou has not played. This year, they have not played a Grand Valley State. They have not played a whole college. They have not played a Saginaw Valley State. They have not played Dort. Mizzou has obviously played Arkansas, Purdue. Missouri State has also played those teams. I feel like Missouri State, they know what it takes to win tough games like this. I'm not saying Mizzou doesn't, but Missouri State, they have more experience of tough teams like this. It's going to come down to the experience aspect and then the grind aspect. I feel like Missouri State is going to steal this first game. Yeah, I think neither of you guys are wrong. I mean, this series could be a coin flip, obviously two very good teams, but it appears we have a repeat of the Arkansas series because I am picking Missouri State 
Um, I, I'm sorry. I just feel like I, it's not like it's impossible for Mizzou to win, but I just think Missouri State is going to come out hungry. They're going to be remembering last year in September when they were uh, in Springfield in that game that happened there. They're going to know this team. They have played competition that is at or above Mizzou's level, and I think at least for game one, I think Missouri State is, is going to come out clicking, and I think they're going to win, but it's going to be a close game. Give me 3-2 Bears. Overtime? Regulation. I'll say regulation. All right, so we all have the pattern of the close game. You said 6-5 overtime. You said 3-2 regulation. I'm going 4-3 overtime winner, and it's going to be coming from Tyler Culleton, in my opinion. I feel like he will get the one. Um, but nevertheless, the, Bear, the uh, Missouri State Tig- Missouri Tigers rather, have played in overtime this year. They lost against Purdue with William Torriani against Purdue. So we'll see what happens. But nevertheless, everyone, thanks for tuning in to the Mizzou Hockey pregame show brought to you by Jim Butler, Centralia. My name is Luca Vitale. Along with me, Owen Backer, Aiden O'Connor, Adam Lewis, and Ian Paprocki on the call tonight. And we'll see you then.